Nanoscience and nanotechnology is the study of the properties and applications of materials and devices which are very, very small. Obviously, this futuristic research requires a people from different traditional disciplines to come together. In IIT Bombay, this has been done by setting up a center for research in nanotechnology and sciences, which consolidates the nano research in IIT Bombay. CRNTS also took under its umbrella the Sophisticated Analytical Instrumentation Facility, or SAIF, which had existed earlier. SAIF is a unique concept which was initiated and is being funded by the Department of Science and Technology, Government of India. Under this program, a number of advanced and state-of-the-art analytical instruments are commissioned under one roof and are made available to researchers from all over India. These state-of-the-art analytical instruments enable a researcher to examine, analyze and study materials at the nano and sub-nano scale. Solar photovoltaic technology is one of the least polluting of energy generation technologies. We are trying to make solar cells using metal oxides and silicon and these films would be of extremely low thickness and these materials can be further deposited using variety of techniques including spray coating which is a technology used for painting cars. The electricity which is derived from solar and wind has to be stored in its chemical form before being put to use elsewhere. Batteries and supercapacitors are energy storage systems which enable this. At CRNTS, we focus on properties of materials at nanoscale which can give us better energy storage systems. We work on economically viable thin film solar cells. Our main focus is to develop new materials that can harvest solar energy by depositing layers of atoms one by one. In order to study various aspects of these thin films like quality of the film, its elemental analysis, its abrupt junctions, we need highly sophisticated techniques like toxins and HRTEM. Water pollution is a very critical problem in India. Some pollutants can even affect our health when they are present at trace levels and some of these contaminants are not even removed by the traditional treatment processes. So we are developing tailor-made nanoparticles for removing these pollutants in the presence of sunlight. In collaboration with Environmental Science and Engineering, we are studying the structure and functionality of these nanoparticles. We are using sophisticated techniques such as electron microscopy and spectroscopy for this purpose. Nowadays, healthcare nanotechnologists are trying to use nanomedicine to combat deadly diseases like cancer. This requires the generation of smart nanoparticles for efficient drug delivery in order to reduce the present treatment associated side effects for better patient compliance. Characterization of such smart nanoformulations requires high resolution electron microscopes and zeta potential analyzer. Wound regeneration is a very complex and demanding problem as it has hierarchical structures ranging from few centimeters to few nanometers. Therefore, we have engineered bone graft for reconstructive surgery with advanced composite made from nanostructures having tuned parameters for easy clinical use. Environmental electron microscope has enabled us to study key cellular and molecular interactions on the scaffold at a nano level. I use time-resolved X-ray tomography. It is a more of a high-resolution CT scan. It tells me whether rocks contain oil and gas. It is very useful to study microstructural evolution and to characterize materials. Proteins are one of the most important biological molecules and essential for life. Proteins have unique, complicated three-dimensional structures that regulate their functions. So, understanding the structures of proteins is essential to solve several biological problems. In CRNTS, we are engaged in solving new protein structures using X-ray crystallography. Material properties can be analyzed chemically on bulk or surface uh, by bunch of instruments. Even slight change in composition can change the properties of the material 
and this slight change can be determined by spectroscopic method at very minute level. Carbon fiber epoxy composites can be used to make strong and light wind turbine blades. However, the interface between the epoxy and the carbon fiber is a weak spot from which damage can nucleate easily. Here at CRNTS, we are working on strengthening the interface using materials development and processing so that the wind turbine blades can have a longer life. Wind turbine blades made of composite materials are the major components of a wind turbine system. And uh, these blades are subjected to cyclic fatigue and environmental loads during operation, which leads to reduced life and degradation. So a collaboration between material science and aerospace department is envisaged to enhance the composite material properties and thus the design life of a wind turbine blade. The output of these sophisticated instruments has any meaning only when the experiments are performed properly and the data are analyzed carefully. We ensure this by conducting weekly meetings involving users, experts and operators where we thrash out issues and ensure that the data are of highest quality. This serves users not only in our institute but across the country.